spirit of prophecy. And then after after that, he took he took that spirit from him and gave him an evil spirit, man. Verse 25. Now therefore I pray thee. Matter of fact, get Galatians. Galatians 1 and 10. But do I now persuade men or the most high? Yeah, yeah. Do I now persuade men or the most high? The same situation had happened with um with Saul. Like he said before, he said, I feared the people. And I obey I feared the people instead of obeying the voice of the Lord. So that and that's why you have men that do what they do nowadays, man. Right? If you're a real man of the Lord, you will do what the Lord commanded you to do. Do I seek to please me? Or do I seek to please me? Because what is seeking, what is pleasing me gonna get you, man? It's gonna get you put to death. At the end of the day, when it comes time to be strong, when it comes time to, to uh, willing off the spirit, you're gonna be thinking carnal because you're trying to please men. Where everybody else getting the shit. Everybody else doing this and everybody else doing that. That was the whole point of the men of the Lord. They was always separate from the people, man. They always away meditating or, or getting visions and then they go speak out to the people. Or if I yet please men. Or if I yet please men, if I try to put on this image to, to please men, to look good in front of men, or to spare their feelings, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead. I should not be the servant of your house shot. I should not be the servant of your house shot, man. So we should not be the servant of your house shot. Should your house shot. We should not please the Lord, man. You're not no true servant if you're trying to please men. Period. Because you can't please the Most High and then try and, and please men at the same time. Because what men want you to do, they want you to do some wicked stuff, man. When you want to read, let's say one of your cousins call you up, man, you trying to go to the club? Nah, man. You trying to come over here and read, you know, read a couple chapters? They not trying to do that. They want to go to the club, man. Can I bring my Bible with me to the club? You know what I'm saying? They not trying to hear that, man, because they don't have the same mindset as you. But at the end of the day, you, you, you got to you gotta worship the Lord, man. You gotta uh, get that respect to the Lord, man. You gotta be his servant. You either be his servant or you be a servant of this world. That means your only two options, man. Yeah, you can get that. Joshua 24 and 14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity. Yeah, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity, man. Not halfway, not how you want it to, but in sincerity. If you be sincere about it, there's only one way to serve him, that's to serve him in truth. To serve him in sincerity and in truth. Yeah, yeah, to serve him in sincerity and in truth. What's up, what's up? Again. It says, now therefore, fear the Lord, mm -hmm. and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Yeah, cause, and what it says in Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, man. So you will have that knowledge. You will have that wisdom to know how to deal when certain situations come about. So Saul, if he would have if he would have feared the Lord instead of the people, he would have been like, hell no, all of them sheep and all of them oxen are deaf right now, man. And watch me cut off Agag's head. Put, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood 
land of Egypt and serve thee the Lord. Yeah, but once you get into other doctrines, that's a whole different spirit. That's a whole different armor. It ain't even armor, man, because it's weak, man. That's a whole nother clothing you put in on, man, versus the armor of the, of the Lord, man. The color of the Lord, man. That's another yeah, that's a whole nother doctrine, because how you gonna believe that the color that that the color of the Lord is that color, and then when He come, you know what you're gonna be doing? You're gonna be you're not you're not you're not Him. That's what you're gonna be saying. You seeking salvation for the person, and the person in front of your eyes is trying to give you sal. Well, would have gave you salvation, but you're you're denying that person, man. Like He said, that's a whole nother doctrine. And, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. And, and that's part of fearing the Lord, man. Because it's like, well, hey, hey, if I don't, you know what I'm saying? If I keep believing that the Lord is just color and the scripture says what it says, you know what I'm saying? I can have a chance of not receiving salvation. I can have a chance to be put in debt. You know? You, you, men fear, man, men of the Lord really fear, with, which is that reverence, respect. They respect the Lord, man, because... Because of what he did for them, man. They understand they ain't got none of this on their own. They understand they didn't give themselves life. They don't give themselves no job. Nigga, you think because you went and put on some slacks and some dress shoes that you got that job because of the way you was dressed? Or because of that man seen that the way you was dressed? The Lord gave you that, man. The Lord gave you everything. And he take two. This is all the Most High's program. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose and, you. And serving men ain't just men trying to look good in front of your boys or, or, or niggas that see you. It's women too, man. Because a lot of people do a lot of weird things, dumb things because of women. Brother, you out here teaching. Talk about destruction of America. Women walk by and change up to something else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, these women so glorious. Yeah. Verse 15, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. Yeah, if it seem evil unto you, if it seem like it's not the right thing for something that you just don't want to do or you don't feel right about it, go ahead. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Yeah, choose you them, whom, choose you whom this day whom you will serve, man. Like the brother always say, man, just if you want to go do that, Go do that, man. Stop wasting our time and stop wasting your time. Because you, you, you're not wasting the Lord's time because you're not fooling the Lord. The Lord already knows his elect, man. We don't know. That's why we got to fight. And that's why we got to have that reverence in him, man. And sincerity. Because if you fake him, he's going to expose you. Period. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood... But the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. Yeah. But as for me and my house, as for me and my house, we, we will serve the Lord. Yeah, we will serve the Lord. Why? Because it's beneficial. And it's, and it's the only right thing to do, man. Like, what else is you put on this earth for? First Samuel 15. And 25. And especially in this society, like, there's nothing here. There's nothing here. They keep coming out with clothes and shoes that they didn't, that they didn't had in the past, man. It's just an ongoing cycle. Technology increases a little bit here and there, man. This, you said who? With the Google Glass, you can pretty much get a Google and shit with these little glasses on and shit. Oh. Yeah, like, what, what's wrong with just going to the laptop, man? Um, verse 25. Now, therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, that I may, may worship the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. Yeah, he like, I can't deal with you, man. I can't deal, I can't deal with you, man. Wilding out, you, diso you disobey. Hey, so hey, that pro 
prove that everybody can't come together, man. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can't come together because he just he just felt like so is Sammy going off? But Sammy going off. That's a question to y'all. Was Sammy going off when he didn't want to come together and, and be in fellowship with Saul? Because he because it grieved him that Saul had went off, man. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle and rent, and it rent. Yeah. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day. I remember I was talking with the brothers earlier in the week, and he was like, Hey, things happen like that, man. That was spiritual right there. Just like my garment is ripped, the Lord is going to rip the kingdom of Israel from you, man. Rip you from being king over Israel. They have given it to a neighbor of thine. I've given it to a neighbor of mine. That is better than thou. Yeah, he clearly told him, look, this guy is better. The next guy is going to be up. He's better than you, period. No respect to person, man. No feeling spare. He was reproving and rebuking him right now, man. And people got to get that sometimes. Go ahead. Also, the strength of Israel would not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. Yep. Then he said, I have sinned. Yet honor me now, I pray thee, for the elders of my people and before Israel. And turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord thy power. Mm -hmm. So Samuel turned again after Saul, and Saul worshiped the Lord. Then says Samuel, bring you hither. After a while, he, he, he like, okay, you know, we'll see what we can do. And it said he turned back, he, he started worshiping the Lord. But you go to the next chapter, that's when the Lord put that evil spirit on him, man. Then says, and, and it goes with the great, uh, the Lord will have, he has compassion on whom he has compassion, is gracious on whom he is gracious. Everybody don't have the same level of, of, of mercy and grace from the Lord, man. It's different levels. That's why even uh, Paul, when he was like, you know, he said he had a, a thorn in his side, he had a pain in his side. He prayed to the Lord three times that that pain could go away. But he said, I guess my, my grace is sufficient unto thee, man. Well, pretty much he was saying that was his lot. He had to go through that pain, man. It's like sometimes we brothers, we all, we got, we got to go through things that other brothers don't go through. Says, this says, Samuel, bring me, bring you hither to meet Agag, the king of the Amalekites. Mm -hmm. And Agag came unto, came to, unto him uh, de delicately. And Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. <laughs> Go ahead. And Samuel said, As I swore, hath, hath made women childless, so shall thy mother be childless among women. So he thought he was all in the clear. Because, you know, Saul ran in there, putting people to death, killing oxen and all of that, and, but brought the king back to the fort. He like, surely the bitter of death is past. I'm good. I'm, I'm good to go. But Samuel like, no, nah, man. I'm... I'm Hey, I'm going to do what he didn't do, man, because I respect the Lord. I got to do what I got to do to show, you know what I'm saying, show my respect towards the Lord. So since you didn't put people to death, go ahead. Uh, it says, so shall thy mother be childless among women. And Samuel healed, a healed Agag in pieces for yep. the Lord in Gilgal. <laughs> so he cut him up, man. Uh, Agag thought he had got away, man, but the Lord, hey, it goes back to what the Lord said, man. Uh, go back up to uh, go to that verse two, right quick. Verse two. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I will remember that which Amalek he were remember. So the Lord right there, he said he remembered. This is not way down the line, but this is down the line after they didn't, you know, ran in after uh, Amalekites and you know what I'm saying, uh, was lying wait for him, messing with them. They was coming out of Egypt and everything, you know. But like he said, he said I remember. And the same with Esau today. You act like the Lord don't remember all the stuff you did to us, man. All that hell you put upon us. All that blood you, all that innocent blood you shed on this land. You act like the Lord don't remember that. Go ahead. I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, Now go and smite Amalek. Now go and smite Amalek. So he remembered what he did 
So he said, like he said, he's, go smite Amalek, man. You know? Go ahead. And utterly destroy all that they have. And utterly destroy all that they have. That's good. You go back to it. So that was, that was what was supposed to happen from the jump. That was the commandment of the Lord to go smite and utterly destroy. But Saul, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't uh, follow through with the, with the Lord's plan. Therefore, Samuel had cleaned it up. He finished it off. Because he, he literally sat there and said, Bitter, the bitterness of death had passed. He thought he, was, he thought he was good. He thought he was in the clear. But the Lord's word don't go out void. He said he was going to get him for what he had did. That was his commandment. But since one man didn't do it, what happened? Another man did it, man. Go ahead. Uh, verse 34. Then Samuel went to Ramah. Saul went up to his house, uh, house to Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Never, nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. Hey, Samuel, he still, you know, even though he reproved and rebuked him, he still, you know what I'm saying? He was, he was a Lord, the Lord's anointed, but he was wicked. So Samuel had to do what he had to do, man. And that's what it comes, you can't, no respect to persons. That's what it's about, man. Trying to look good in front of nobody. Hey, what the Lord said, do, that's what you got to do, period. That's exactly what you got to do, man. Also, it says that, uh, Thank you. 